In this video, we'll load the kiln for a bisque firing. Hi, welcome to Pottery Crafters. Loading your kiln for a bisque firing is different from loading for a glaze firing, and I'll go through the whole process with you and the things you need to be aware of. I'm going to load this 818 scut kiln with this greenware. This kiln is 17 and a half inches high and 16 and a half inches across. It does have three inch bricks, so I lose a little real estate inside, but it's better insulated, so it's worth the loss. Before loading, make sure all of your pieces are bone dry. This lowers the chance of your pottery cracking and extends the life of your elements in the kiln. Electric kilns hate moisture. Let's start loading. Never place your kiln shelf on the bottom of your kiln. You need air to flow under the shelf. Place three one-inch posts on the bottom of your kiln. Be careful not to hit your shelf on the soft brick on the sides. And also be careful not to hit the thermocouple. Then place your posts right underneath the posts on the bottom. This is to help prevent your shelves from warping. Greenware is very fragile, so you don't want to grab it by the rim. It's best to handle with both hands. I'm going to place the shorter items on the bottom shelf. Your greenware should be at least an inch away from the elements and two inches away from the thermocouple and kiln sitter if you have one. There is a difference between bisque and glaze firing. The big one is the greenware can touch each other and you can have dust on the greenware and the bisque firing will burn the dust right off. You want at least a half an inch clearance between your greenware and the top shelf. And be careful not to hit your thermocouple. sure it's nice and sturdy. Then place your pulse right under the pulse beneath. I always feel it with my finger to make sure I have the right spot. Great. Now we can start stacking. With greenware, you can stack them together because the bisque pottery won't fuse together. That is a great advantage. Show you an inch away. Even though you can stack your greenware and have it touching, it's still like a jigsaw puzzle. And with bisque firing, you don't have to protect your kiln shelves. I also have a video on four ways to protect your kiln shelf. I left a link for you below. If you're finding any value from this video, hit the like button. Also, to see more videos like this in the future, hit the subscribe button to get notified anytime a new video comes out. I'll place the third and final shelf on the post. Make sure it's nice and stable. Some potters don't use shelves and they'll stack all of their greenware together. I'm not that brave. 
This greenware is at such of a fragile state that if the weight is too much, you can easily chip, crack, or even crush your pottery. Also, if you pack the shelves too tightly, you won't allow room for the gases to escape. Bisque firing is important for several reasons. Most commercial glazes are made for bisque ware. It gets your pottery ready for glazing by removing the moisture and organic materials in the clay. And it transforms the fragile greenware into ceramic material, making it durable and porous to safely decorate and allow the glaze to absorb into the pottery. For more information, I have an article on the purpose of bisque firing on my Pottery Crafters website. I left a link for you in the show notes below. You want to make sure you don't stack it too high. A little more room here. You have to be careful when moving your greenware around because I have already chipped and broken pieces of my pottery doing that. I like the size of this kiln. I don't have to make as much to fill it up and the room doesn't get as hot and it takes less power to heat up. It's important to find the right kiln that fits your needs. I have an article on buying a kiln, the facts, features, and what to consider. I left a link for you below. If you're new to this channel, welcome to Pottery Crafters. Say hi in the comments section below. Make sure it's an inch away from the walls. Okay. I have room for another bowl. Looks good. Now it's time to fire her up. There is no exact temperature requirement for bisque firing. However, the ideal range is usually between cone 06 and 04 which is 1,945 degrees Fahrenheit or 1,063 degrees Celsius. You don't want to fire over cone 04 because the higher firing temperature will result in a less porous ceramic and the glaze will not adhere as well to the bisque ware. Firing at cone 04 increases the pottery's durability and ensures that all the gases are eliminated from the bisque ware. I have a video on programming this touchscreen controller for bisque ware and glaze firing. I left a link for you in the show notes below. The process of loading a kiln is quite easy if you follow the guidelines correctly. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And if you want to see me cover any other topics on this channel, leave a note down below. I'll see you next time. And as always, let's stay dirty.